the important thing is again like how you present it and your completeness Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jörg, which is German for George here at Find a Job in Germany. And with me today is Hussein. I have the honor and the pleasure to be talking to Hussein, who's a data scientist that came from Karachi in Pakistan to Berlin in Germany. And um, what's nice about this actually is that I don't get to talk to a lot of people that I have not seen in quite some time. And this is very interesting here for you guys maybe. He has just not arrived yesterday. Hussein has been here for almost a year already. And that's also what this interview is going to be about. Again, as always, those who know the channel, there's going to be two episodes here. And the first one, we're going to talk about how Hussein successfully found his job. And then the second part, we'll be deep diving into life, culture, work, life, culture, and all that in Germany. Hussein, thank you so much for being here with us today. Really appreciate you making room and time. How's it going? Happy to be here. Happy to do, do this interview. Wonderful. I just talked to you a couple of minutes before I started the recording how I actually moved away from Berlin. You moved to Berlin uh, 10 months ago, 10 or 12 months ago. Yeah. Uh, how has it been so far in a nutshell? Um, overall, it's been fantastic. Of course, you know, when you move away from your family, you move away from your home. It's a little difficult at the start, but you know, as time goes by, you make friends, you have fun. Um, you settle into your work, you settle into your routine, and then you like everything then just comes naturally. Of course, there are a few downsides, but overall, I would say like it's been a very positive experience. That's cool. And you changed your style a little bit. I, I noticed the hat right away. So that's cool. Uh, looking like a typical Berliner. Um, Hussein, when you, and I want to be quite open here, when you first of all signed up or when I first met you and I was explaining the program to you, um, you already had, and I remember this, a couple of calls with companies in Europe, in Germany for data science roles. First of all, what's your focus in data science? Um, so my focus in data science is mainly not on the ML engineering side, but you know more on the business side. So I work, and my niche is actually customer-centric products. So initially I was working in an e-commerce, and now I'm working in gaming, which is, you know, again, a customer centric business or main consumers are user and customers like you and me. So this is my niche and I work very closely with product and business. So it's more, it's more of a business related role rather than and more engineering side of the things. Cool. And that already brings me to the most important aspect here. Data scientists don't equal data scientists. Is that right? Everybody is different. Everybody has a different focus. It's a generic term. And sometimes we don't even really know what we're talking about, right? Yeah, I think like data science now is has become a very umbrella term. There are so many subdivisions, so many sub roles within the data science umbrella terms. There's ML engineers, sometimes even business analysts, data analysts, and there are um, data scientists. And there is also something new um, nowadays, which is called product scientists. So a lot of different things just under one big umbrella. Exactly. When you were signing up for our program, you worked in Karachi for an e-commerce platform already that was also affiliated with uh, a very renowned Chinese brand, which we all know for being Alibaba. The, the aspect here plays a role in how you find a job. You're going to tell us more about that later. What did you bring to the table? What were your skills then, would you say? And what are the most important hard skills, tech skills for a data scientist? That is looking for a job in Germany. Um, so let's start with the languages first, right? So the languages can be, um, it's, mainly, it's mainly Python and R, and I would say like Python is like still 80, 90%. Um, and then I would say, so this is your hard skill, right? So your language skills. And then there, of course there could be other, other tools. So you, so you can complement your skill set with a BI tool, which can be a Looker um, or any cloud platforms, cloud infrastructure platforms, et cetera, et cetera. But I think for me, actually, the more important thing was to understand the, uh, to understand the data science and statistics concepts well. Because if you know what you want to do and how to do it, you can do it in any language on any tools that you want. Because anywhere you go, again, the tools um, that they use, the platforms that, that they use will always be different. But if you know the concepts well, if you know how what to do and when to do what, then I guess like learning the tool is, is is not a hard thing. I think learning the concepts more, especially in data science, is a more is a more difficult thing to do. And this is again a little different from let's say like other tech skills where you know where 
you should focus more on getting your hard skills uh, more polished. So for example, if you are a Java developer, then you know you should know like ins and outs of uh, of Java. Mm -hmm. But you, but when you are working in data science, I think that your hard skills. So for example, even if you don't know a lot of concepts in Python, uh, a lot of let's say programming concepts in Python, I think it's okay. Um, you can always like learn on the job. And again, like as I said, the more important thing is to know the concepts well and to know what to do in different situations. When you were screening, thank you so much, <laughs> that when you were screening for job descriptions on what data scientist roles are like in Germany, and when you are then comparing back in the days, when you were comparing them to your existing tech stack, again, you just mentioned Python, R, you've worked as a data analyst as well. You've also gotten data engineering experience. So you were capable of also creating ETL pipelines yeah. and you were pretty good at data visualization. Mm -hmm. And then of course, scikit-learn, pandas, numpy, yeah, you've all brought to the Python. table. Did you find that equally or were there other skills that you saw throughout which they're also asking for? Maybe that also depends on the specific role, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it does depend on a specific role. So again, like, you know, if you are um, into more into ML engineering, I would say then, you know, maybe some um, more ETL experience, maybe more cloud experience is necessary. So Azure comes in, Google Cloud, uh, GCP, Google Plow, uh, Cloud Platform comes in. Um, but, you know, I was looking for more, a little bit, a little bit of more, Business centric role. So, in my experience, it was more about data visualization. So, you know, like having uh, a good grasp on uh, on any BI tool, and you know, just the concepts of a BI tool. So, it can be Power BI, it can be um, Looker, it can be um, Tableau, and uh, and then also, I was also looking at some NLP related roles because you know I I also had some experience doing um, some large scale NLP projects. And uh, and again, so you know, NLP is again. Uh, while we were talking earlier, you know, it, it is again like a sub branch of the umbrella data science term. So NLP skills, so you know, it again it depends on what you want to work, uh, what you find interesting to work in. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, so again, it was mainly Python, the different libraries in Python. You named a few: Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, um, NumPy, and you know. Uh, uh, all uh, yeah, all the regular ones, and uh, other than that, it was you know mainly just concepts. So you know, so for example, for me, it was also product sense, and product sense is basically you know, let's say if I'm launching a new product in the market, how am I going to evaluate if that product is doing good? So you know, just having the sense of evaluating a product in different type of markets, what KPIs you can think about. So this is you know what I was looking for, and these are the things that came across a lot of. Uh, a lot of job uh, requirements while I was searching. And, you know, like, again, like I'm naming things which are not so common. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if I may add, and uh, besides the tech stack, of course, and besides all the niches or the sub areas that we talked about, big data, NLP, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. If I can be honest with you and back in the days, I told you, I have confidence in you finding a job. I think ladies and gentlemen, everybody who's watching Hussein, he knows how to speak. He knows how to present things. It's so important that you understand the connection between what you know and how you present it. Communication is half the job of finding a job in Germany, I would say. Thank you for actually proving my point here because you really nicely described that. And you're also very engaging. You're open-minded. You are, you know, interactive and you are not just re, you know you are not just responding to me with one word or one sentence responses you're actually deep diving this ladies and gentlemen is something that you're going to be encountering in the tech rounds very much and this is what i want to talk to you about now hussein you signed up i actually have the date here in my crm march 12th <laughs> that was when we started and then we, uh, two weeks later, started uh, applying together with a new CV. That's how we generally work. You received your offer back at the end of June 2023. In between, you were invited by several companies. What were the tech rounds like? Everybody knows HR rounds now. We've covered that in a lot of other success story videos. If you're not familiar with that, you want to maybe look at some of the other success stories. But here, Hussein, really, what did you take away? What do you remember really from the tech rounds? So, you know, I would also like, uh, also like to take the audience back a little bit. So, you know, um, you mentioned that, you know, that I already had some interview calls before I joined you guys, right? Mm -hmm. So, so unfortunately, like those, uh, those interview calls didn't work out for me. 
and the reason was because you know I got out in tech rounds, and I had so I had I always had the skill set. I just didn't know like how to present it, how to just you know how to just like go across the line. And then when I when I joined you guys, and then you know when I again had my uh, had my tech rounds, the most important thing is like like let's be honest, like everyone who is applying to the job, everyone who is interviewing, they know their stuff. The important thing is again like how you present it and your completeness. So again, uh, for me, the tech round was actually not life coding, but for me, it was uh, it was a case study. So I was given a case study. I had a week to work on it, and then I had to present um, all uh, all of my findings. So uh, the way that I approached the case study was, so I spent a couple of days, you know, just uh, just doing all the tech stuff, just writing my code, just answering like all the questions. But then after that, you know, it's more about like thinking out of the box, like um, let's say, and again, in a data science case, like if I had some more data ex except for the one that I've, uh, that I've already been given, what, how could the results have been changed? So, you know, so, you know like things like these. So I thought about these a lot. Um, I also added like um, a whole new perspective into my, uh, into my presentation and just want to make sure that, you know, like my presentation is complete. I, I rechecked everything, just need to make sure that, you know, there are no spelling errors, no silly errors. Oh, you yes, very code. good. <laughs> yeah, you come into code very good. Uh, um, everything is there, um, all the different sections, the headings, the commenting, every, everything needs to be perfect because, you know, like, again, um, a lot of people will be interviewing for positions that you apply for. So you have to be absolutely spot on, like every, to do every small detail. Um, I, yeah, and every small detail matters a lot. Um, you can be very good at writing code, but if you can't explain it, if you can't present it, if you are, if you're not good at, um, let's say like giving another perspective, thinking out of the box, um, then, you know, unfortunately you won't be able to clear the, uh, uh, yeah, clear these rounds. And that was actually, if I may say the strategy behind it all, what you needed yeah. was essentially a foot in the door with so many companies that there would be a learning curve because, and I've, if I may say from experience, hardly anyone gets a job from the first process that they are in. You get a call for the very first time, uh, that's nice. You're most likely not gonna get an offer from that call. That's perfectly fine, but you need to make sure it's part of a steady learning curve and a learning curve is what you did uh, eventually have. I think that was also what made you more confident throughout. The rejections, of course, they suck, but then you also took that home and said to yourself, uh, next time I'm gonna actually be better. Yeah, and that's what happened. So I had like the first iterations or first batch of interviews didn't work out. Then I joined you guys. Um, we worked on a few things. We tried to like cover all the cracks. And uh, I think once I joined you guys in the first batch, I, I got an offer. So that was really, really pleasing for me. <laughs> After five different processes, I can see that here. And ladies and gentlemen, just for reference purposes, I know people that have been interviewing with 20 different companies in our program, and we're still with them. That is why we're saying there is no time limit to the program, because everybody also has a different learning curve and everybody has a different speed. Hussein was, if I may say, above average. So in other words, above average when it comes to speed and learning, but everybody's different and that should be respected and you shouldn't pressure yourself. Or as I like to say, it's a marathon and not a sprint. And what then happened was you actually ended up with a company that you also thought that you like when it comes to the product, right? Definitely. Um, how did you ensure it's actually a company that you find good? How did you do that? What was important to you? Because, I mean, you don't want to just take any offer. You also want to be convinced, right? Yeah. Um... So basically, first of all, um, you know, it was right up my niche. So, you know, I mentioned this earlier that, you know, that I like to work with the human centric um, products. So number one, um, the company that I'm working for is again, consumer centric products. So that was a tick. Um, and then other than that, you know, when I just went on the website, I just looked at um, all the success stories, um, employee reviews. So, you know, it just, it was just like very refreshing. You know, it was, it, it wasn't, I would say like very, very standardized, you know, like very standard answers. So it was, it was very good. And then, you know, um, again, I went on LinkedIn, I searched for the company. I looked at like all the different events that they were doing. Again, 
I did not actually message um, any of the employees in the company. Um, and that is something that, that, that you can always do. And it, I think like it is uh, actually encouraged to do. Um, but then again, the other thing that I did was, and you just get a feel. So when you were actually interviewing and I actually interviewed with six different people in my process. Um, <laughs> so I think you just, you just get a feel that, you know, if this company is right for you or not, you know, just the way that they are speaking, um, when you are showing interest, um, in, in that position, they also show interest in you. So they are also showing interest in, uh, in, in the candidates. So I think like I got this feeling, I understood I, again, like the industry was very similar. I got a good feeling while I was interviewing. So everything, you know, just stacked up. And in the end, uh, I got an offer for them. And, uh, and right now, like I'm still with them and very happy. Wonderful. That's really great to hear. Hussein, we're going to continue the conversation in a second episode that we're then going to feature at a later point in time. This was the very first episode of our interview and our success story. Thank you very much for sharing these details because I know for a fact there's quite a few people out there that are also looking into finding a job as a data scientist, but really we're talking about that should be the takeaway for everybody here, a generic term that needs to be broken down. What's your focus really and where does that fit into the market? Because if you're seeing a job ad online, it doesn't mean that they're just going to invite you. No, it needs to fulfill several criteria, probably English speaking role, probably your focus as a subdomain. We already covered that. We already talked about Hussein's case. And of course, a lot of other things factor in. In this case, industry specific experience that they also thought would help them. And of course, Hussein's a great guy. I mean, we saw this now. Thank you so much. And Hussein, I'll see you in the next interview. If you guys are interested in joining our program, you know how to do that. There's a link underneath this clip, which you can click and you can just call us or we can call you by you booking a get to know call through our page. And then Paul's gonna ask you a couple of questions and we see if we can work together. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Hussein. See you in the next video.